Good morning, Tigers, and welcome to our February liturgy. Today we celebrate the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. Our Lady of Lourdes is one of the many titles of Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary. On February 11, 1858, Mary appeared to 14-year-old Bernadette in Lourdes, France. Our Lady would return 17 more times in 1858. It is documented that there were over 20,000 people present for one of the apparitions. The Blessed Virgin, through Bernadette, had come to call sinners to a change of heart through prayer and penance. She also instructed Bernadette to tell the local bishop that a chapel was to be built on the site and processions were to be held. Our grotto on campus is a replica of our Lord's, of the Lord's grotto in France. Let us remember that Our Lady is always with us, no matter who you are. Today we also celebrate our founder, our founder, Blessed Father Basil Moreau's birthday. 222 years ago, Father Moreau was born in a small village near Le Mans, France. May each of us have the same deep devotion to our, our lady as Father Moreau did. Please rise as we greet our celebrant, Father Joe Moyer. So let's begin today's liturgy in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let's take a moment to reflect on our lives, to acknowledge those times when we haven't been so faithful, and let's turn to our loving God to ask for peace and pardon. Lord Jesus Christ, you show us the way to your Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us to the new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to light everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Grant to us, O merciful God, the protection of our weaknesses, that we who keep the memorial of the Immaculate Mother of God may with the help of her intercessions rise up from our iniquities. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. May we see it for the first reading. Isaiah. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her, all you who love her. Exult, exult with her, all you who are mourning over her, so that you may suck fully of the milk from her, of her comfort, that you may nurse with delight at her abundant breast. For thus says the Lord, Lo, I will spread prosperity over her like a river, and with the help, with the wealth of the nations, like an overflowing torrent. As nurslings, you shall be carried in her arms, and fathered in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. In Jerusalem you shall find your comfort. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your body flourish like the grass. The Lord's power shall be known to his servants. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is that you are the highest honor of our race. You are the highest honor of our race. Blessed are you, daughter, by the most high God, above all the women on earth, and blessed be the Lord God, the creator of heaven and earth. You are you the highest are honor of our race. Your deed of hope will never be forgotten by those who tell of the might of God. You, you are, are the, the highest, highest honor of our race. Of our race. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, O Virgin Mary, who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. 
Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to his servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish ceremonial washing, each holding twenty to thirty gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them with, to the brim, and then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. They took it, and when the head waiter tasted the water that had become the wine, without knowing where it came from, although they who drew the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have, are drunk freely, are, are show um, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this at the beginning of his signs in the Cana and Galilee. And so he built his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. Our brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So actually on this day we celebrate two feasts. We celebrate the, the birthday of um, Father Moreau, our founder. And we also celebrate the site of the Immaculate Conception in which Mary, for the first time, was called the Immaculate Conception. Um, and she was called that because she revealed herself to St. Bernardine, um, who was, a, who was a, a, a teenage girl at the time. And oftentimes I think that, especially during that time in Europe in the 1850s, 1860s, we know that in a lot of places there had been unrest, there was um, revolts, there was people that were changing, and the whole, whole experience of do we now believe because science is teaching us something else? Or, or what, what are those things about our faith that we can believe, we can relate to, and we know that are true? And a lot of people, a lot of times we think, you know, we, we think of the lights of the saints, we think of Mary, we think of Bernadette, we think of Father Moreau, and we said, oh, they must have it easy because they became saints. And what we realize is how difficult they had it. And poor Bernadette, who was... Um, only about 13, 14 at the time, the whole village turned, turned against her. The whole country of France turned against her and saying, why are you doing this to us? Why are you saying that you're seeing the Virgin and nobody else can see her? And so she had to rely on her inner strength. And that's what the, the best thing about the saints is that they rely on this inner strength and they know that what they're doing is they're being guided. And uh, it doesn't matter what anybody else tells them, they have that interior motivation to keep going. And we see that with Bernadette, we see that with Father Andre, we see that with Father Moreau, that even though they meet a lot of obstacles, they're telling them, you know, you can't do this, or you're not doing this, or uh, things are wrong, things are difficult, they never give up. Uh, we know that Father Moreau eventually gets kicked out of his own congregation, and he has to watch his school that he built from the ground slow off piece to piece. With St. Bernadette, we know that even after the situation that people started believing, she still had a very rough life. And she died at the age of, I think she was 35. And she, it took her a long time even to get permission from Rome to join a convent because nobody wanted her in the convent because there was still doubt, right? And so what, is, what these saints are telling us is that oftentimes we have to rely on that inner strength. We know the inner voice. We have to rely on what we truly believe in order to find our path in life. And oftentimes that path is very difficult and there's easier ways to go. But if we know that we have that promise of Christ in our lives, that promise of the Virgin in our lives, that promise of what direction we want, we don't let those obstacles get in our way. We follow that direction of that interior life to the um, Immaculate Conception, 
to the rising of Jesus Christ himself. So with that in mind, let us bring our petitions before our loving God. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may we, through the intercession of Our Lady of Lords, grow in our ability to bear Christ to the world with confidence and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, may God's light shine upon them in their work of spreading the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world, world leaders, may God guide them in the faith to lead with responsibility and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elderly and the homebound, may the Lord fill them with his presence and comfort them with friendship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here today, may God's bountiful presence permeate our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with seemingly insurmountable challenges, may God's love strengthen their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may the Lord God welcome them to his dwelling place where, where they may offer him continuous praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all whose care is in is in our heart, our concern, and for all the intentions that we hold in silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also remind you that in our own community of those who have died on this day. In 1872, Brother Joseph Benu. In 1878, Brother Richard Stoney. In 1891, Brother Nicholas Bouchard. In 1895, Brother Joseph Gaujon. In 1902, Brother Abel Beaumont. In 1916, Brother Louis Bouget. In 1943, Brother Raphael Mavrinsky. In 1951, Reverend William Lance. In 1994, Reverend Joseph Forde. In 2004, Brother Christian Steinet. In 2016, Brother William Kirsch. And in 2018, Brother Joseph John Calvo. For these and for all the dead, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty and loving God, we ask that you grant all these petitions, those in which we place before you from our hearts. We ask this to Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. Go to the earth and work of human hands to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands have become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And together, my brothers and sisters, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name. For our good and good of all his holy church. May the humility of our only begotten Son come, O Lord, to our aid. And may, may he who at the birth of the Virgin Mary did not diminish but consecrated her integrity 
by taking from us now the wicked deeds, make us obtain, make us oblation acceptable to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We have lifted them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confessions of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever anew, and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mystery may be fulfilled. Their great example leads us to courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all that we do. And so, Lord, of all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks and praise and exaltation, as together we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and into one to his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which be given up for you. In a similar way, when so presented, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And together let's proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread, bread and, drink and drink this cup, we proclaim Lord, your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Only we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gotten into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, our clergy, our religious, and your entire people everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Brother Andre, Father Moreau, St. Bernadette, the Blessed Apostles, the Glorious Martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For it's through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So in love and confidence, together we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, gracing our peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may always be free from sin and sick from all distress as we await the blessed hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. But not our sins, but the faith of your church. And grace you grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Peace to the Lord be always with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Our 
brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to suffer the Lord. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Amen. The blood of Christ.
I recite our spiritual communion prayer for our brothers and sisters at our primary campus, as well as anyone joining us on the live stream. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire, desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And I encourage you to come to the library to see the churches that the fifth graders have built, the replica of their own churches, and let us pray. As we honor the memory of the mother of your son, we pray, O Lord, that the oblation of this sacrifice, made by your grace, make us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And the blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Master, then let's go forward in the peace of Christ. Thank you for your participation today in Mass. Uh, just a few brief reminders. Uh, remember today is Father Murrow's birthday, so we celebrate that. Uh, we are getting ready to go into our Mardi Gras holiday, so we want you to stay safe and well during the week off. But more importantly, we're coming up on our very important season of Lent. So what will you be doing in those 40 days of Lent to build your faith? and to build your relationship with God and your spirituality. So we thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thank you, and have a good day.